Okay, cool. Yeah, welcome to my talk. It's called uh, Analytics and Architecture in Elm. Uh, my name is Chad. Um, go by Chad Tech Online. Um, oh, one thing I want to clarify about this talk um, is I realize that the word analytics is uh, a little bit ambiguous, right? Like sometimes people say code analytics, stuff like that. I mean, um, front end analytics, like tracking user experience, things like that. Um, so if you haven't done analytics, I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, so that you're up to speed. Uh, so, you know, if, um, if you're writing code, you know, like at work, um, it's a possible experience where, you know, you write the code, you know, the ticket comes in, you write the code, you finish it, your boss says, good job. And then you just never hear about it ever again, right? You don't know what happened. Um, and uh, you don't know if anybody used it. You don't know if anybody was happy using it. You don't know if it could have been used like in a much better way. Um, and if you're not doing that and no one else is like, you're doomed, right? Like the business has to figure out what if people are happy, if customers are, are satisfied, that, that kind of stuff. So um, front end analytics is a way of like figuring that out, like knowing what users are doing when they use your application. Um, so, you know, you could answer questions like um, you, you might have like a little drop down and then in that drop down is a log out, like a log out button. And you might um, you might add analytics so that like when people click the drop down and then they click log out, like events get sent to the back end and then you have those logs and you can look at them later and you might see that like every time people click the drop down they click log out and so like in effect the drop down is really just about logging out maybe you can make that a little bit quicker put the log out button not under the drop down things like that that's kind of like that that's why people do analytics um and so yeah so that's kind of what the i'm going to talk about like let me just scoot over to uh, my goals of this talk. So we're going to speed run through like an okay implementation of doing that in, in Elm. Um, yeah, doing analytics. Um, and, uh, you know, okay, I hate saying okay or like a naive implementation because like it'll work, which is great, right? Working is great. Uh, but then we're going to iterate on that and get something a little bit more elegant. And then from there, we're going to um, look at like the elegance and then just try to learn the technique that could be applied to like a bunch of different things, like not just analytics. Um, yeah, so let's hop in. So um, I'm going to scoot over to uh, JavaScript real quick. Um, oh, by the way, yeah, it's so easy to skip things when talking. So I have this like this um, example project um, that I made. Uh, it's just a form, you know, like everything on the internet. Um, I can here. Let me refresh. I can enter a value in here. I can hit enter, and it saves. Then I can come back to it, and then it, you know it remembers. Um, and that's it, that's all I can do. Uh, you can close it, you can open it. Um, and so that's what we're gonna be working with. Um, and so, you know, we wanna like track things like when it's saved, clicked, when it's open clicked. Um, most, if you, so if you do analytics, like there's a lot of like third, par third party packages that you can like pay money for, or you can roll your own. Um, but I've noticed that like a lot of them will have like this track function, like that's part of their API. And you type in like the, the, the arguments are like you type in the, the name of the event and then you put throw on a payload of whatever you want. Usually the payload's empty, right? Because, for example, if I have like tracking for the save button, I just ha I just name this event save button clicked, and then I don't want to like track anything else with it. It's just like an empty payload, and then I can like that will go to the back end. Then I'll see like oh this event came in. It's called save button clicked. I know that the user clicked the save button. Like that's good. Now I know that people are using this feature and it wasn't like a just like lost effort. Um, so that is that's that. That's like what. What analytics like will look like in code ultimately, and I've got this Elm package, uh, this module like, I made called Analytics, and, and this is like the same thing except like in Elm. So uh, I want to make an analytics event. You know, you can make one just from the name. If you want to add a payload, which is usually like a secondary concern, you can um, you can pass the event into this with props function, and then you could ultimately turn it into a command where it'll kind of like get launched out to the back end. Uh, and so then this will uh, this is what that will look like when you're when you're making an analytics event. Um, yeah, sorry about the, uh, the, the highlighting, but it, it thinks there's problems. And I guess there are, but I'm trying to, I'm not trying to write code. I'm trying to show you stuff. Um, but yeah, so this will be like, I want to make a command that will record when the save button is clicked. Um, yeah. And okay. So let's like, let's like look at the application. Like, let's see, um, let's see what that looks like in practice. Let me look at my notes, make sure I'm not skipping anything. Yep. Okay. So one thing I want to point out about the application, um, like the code in, in our, like our, our form app is, uh, this, here's my message type. So this, this describes what you already know. Like these are the things you can do. You can save, you can, you can press enter and that will also save close open. 
I've named these messages after things that can happen, like in, in the user experience. Uh, and I highly recommend that you do, you do this in your applications, just generally. Uh, unfortunately, I can't get too deep into why that is, but like that's that's what I've done, and that's kind of key to some of this analytics stuff I'm going to talk about as well. Um, but yeah, so that's my message type. Um, let's say that like yeah, let me go down to the update. Okay, so here's my my update. Um, pretty straightforward, right? Like if you click save, it goes to the save behavior. If you hit enter, it goes to the save behavior. I want to add some analytics, so I've got analytics name save clicked. Analytics to command. That's pretty simple, right? Like now I have analytics on this event. Um, and I will do the same for enter. And I, I think I'm just doing what's like intuitive to a lot of people when they get into this. Um, and I don't know if I said this before, but you know, like we're like five minutes in this talk. I, I'm hoping I'm saving you like two days of you know work and thinking about it. Uh, if you ever do analytics in your own project. Okay, so I have, I'm not gonna do all the events um, to save time, but like you can see like I have two of these these messages and then they have analytics on them. Um, this is it, like here's step one, this, this works, th that's good. Um, now let me start talking about like where this is gonna go, like what kind of problems you're gonna run into. Uh, first problem is that um, like if you just count the lines of code here, I think like 50% of these lines are dedicated to analytics and the other 50% are like functionality. Now, like I think developers and people generally, when they're thinking about the software, they're thinking about the functionality. When they get in the code, they're thinking about implementing functionality. And analytics is like this optional side project that business might want you to do. Um, so this is like, this is just worthless information for for, for most people, most of the time. So it's like, it, it, it hurts readability because it's functionally noise, right? Like. It's this complicated stuff. Like it's you know, think about the characters. Like it's just complicated characters, and what it's doing is just not really essential to what you are usually thinking about, which is just the functionality of the application. So that, that's one problem. Second problem, also stemming from like what developers think about, uh, is like developers. Yeah, developers are not thinking about analytics. Um, if no one, if no one makes them do analytics, if they don't remind themselves, it it won't happen, right? Like it will it will remain command dot none, and then analytics will not happen. So then you you just won't get the job done. Um, so those are those are two problems that come with this approach. Now let me just like, let me move to the second approach. Like um, just, yeah, let me do this stuff. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if I, uh, yeah, it won't, won't matter. Um, oops, oh, I added, uh, I did that one. I added that one in my dry run. When I was talking to myself. Uh, okay, so here's okay here's um, implementation implementation number two. So I've made a distinct track function that takes the messages and it makes analytic fits. This is now now it's not noise because it's like separated from the functionality. It's in its own place. You you don't have to go to that place if you don't want to. If that's not where your your headspace is. So it solves that first problem, right? Like it, now it's not noise. It's kind of like its own information in its own spot uh, in the code. Um, here's, here's the second thing, and here's the second thing I really love, which is that bef when it comes to forgetting to do this, if you add a new um, if you add a new message, like say you, you add new functionality, so there's new messages, this will become a compiler error that you you didn't do analytics, right? Like it's impossible to forget now because the Elm compiler is now working with you to make sure that this gets done. You have to add a case here, even if it's none, but you have to remember to do it. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, so I think that's the second implementation. It's so, it's so quick and easy to just, just show what's going on. Yeah, is there someone? Yeah, okay, great, great question. Okay, so, um, yeah, here's the, the main, uh, the main module, and it also has its own track function. So, um, um, yeah, okay, then that doesn't answer your question either, but that, that's working there. Um, so I've made it this like super update function, which is really just a wrapper around the update function. So every time a message comes in, first we assess the analytics event, and then uh, then we turn it into a command, if, if there is one. So there's like this, this one spot at the very top of the update, which gets the analytics command, and then mix it, mixes it into the normal kind of path of updating. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you have any, yeah, cool. Yeah. Any questions? I'm happy to answer them. And I hope, hope things are clear enough in the, uh, in the interim. Um, what else? I think, I think I've talked about analytics. Let me just like talk about the lessons, I guess, like things that are not specific to analytics that I've done here uh, that you could do for a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so uh, one thing is like, um, I just showed you this like hierarchy of track functions. Uh, trying to zoom in here. Um, you know, if you, if you're, if you've done Elm, like you've, you've probably run into like the normal set of things that modules expose, like model, message, view, update, subscriptions. And if you've been doing things for a while, I hope you've like come to learn that like, this is like a canon of things that modules expose, but you don't need, you have the freedom and flexibility to not do all of them all the time. And sometimes it's really good to only do a few of them. Maybe even most of the time it's good to do only a few of them. Like you don't always need a model. Models will often complicate things. Um, but kind of stepping on that, like I just made up a new one. I made up something called track, right? You can make up your own things for this hierarchy, right? So there's like a, well, let me clarify what I mean by that. So there's like, there's view functions, there's a the top view function, and then there's the, um, there's a sub view functions, like for maybe for every page. And then every page has the view functions for its widgets. Um, and that hierarchy doesn't, it, like it might be the same shape as like the update hierarchy, like one at the top, page updates, widget updates. You can make up your own hierarchies. Right? That's awesome. You can make up your own hierarchies. Like you can make up a track hierarchy. So there's one at the top, pages have their own tracking functions, widgets have their own tracking functions, and they all just kind of add up to the top. Um, and this, this is just a powerful technique. You can do this with all kinds of things. You can do it with um, key commands. Uh, you can do it with uh, ports. This is, um, you know, you, you can have modules say like, these are the ports I'm listening for. And then, you know, it, it works its way down. Um, what else? Yeah, I, I've done complicated stuff. I guess I can't like just summarize easily, but you, like this is a technique you can do. You can just make up your own hierarchies and just sort of add them all up. Um, and, it, and it works pretty well. I guess second, uh, the second lesson that I want to convey in this uh, is that um, I really love the compile error stuff. Like the cool thing about compile errors is like you have to look at them. And I I don't know if you, you can relate, but sometimes there's projects where like if you want to do something new, you have to remember in your own head to go to like the spot and change this and that spot and do this. And, um, you know, you can make that's a human error you can make where you won't forget. And then like it'll get into production before you remember to do that. But if you can just make a compile error happen, no matter how arbitrary the compile error, you will have to go to that spot and see that. Um, and I really stress no matter how arbitrary, because like I've done code like this, where it's like case nothing. This, like this is nonsense code, right? Like I know it's nothing, right? There's no point having that uh, case statement here. But if I change something about this value, or maybe I'll give it a type signature. Uh, if I change something about this value, this is a kind of crazy example. If, if model changes, if, if the definition of model changes, I have to come to the spot to fix it. The code won't compile, even though B is not used. It's just a nonsense value. But I have to come here and fix it, which means I have to see the spot in the code, which means I have to remember there's something going on here I need to fix. Um, this may be a, this may be an annoying. Depends on you know who, who you are and how you feel about it. Because now you have to you're, you're getting annoyed or bothered or, or uh, the the compiler is like you know bugging you to come here. But on the other hand, like you have to come here to remember. Um, and I, I absolutely I, I love this idea. Um, I'm, I'm really playing with it a lot. But just the fact that case statements and records and things like that they will create compiler errors and compiler errors are in themselves valuable, even if there's no actual problem. There's no practical problem there. Um, so I think, I think that's, that's it. That's as far as I've got for my talk. Um, oh, I realized I forgot to plug where I work and that we're hiring. Um, so before I sign off, um, uh, I work at this company called Instruction Site. We have an application that looks like this. I just uh, Googled uh, our own product. Um, it's like a floor plan for construction stuff, tracking progress. See this picture, it like corresponds to somewhere on this actual floor plan of someone building an actual building. Uh, we use Rust and Elm. Um, we do some complicated, uh, interesting stuff like with Wasm. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, Luke and I work there. I think Luke might, might be on this call. Um, but yeah, if you want to work with us on an application like this, uh, reach out to me. Um, we're hiring. So um, yeah, love, love to talk to you. Um, my name is Chad. I guess I'll, I'll be hanging around for questions.
Um, yeah, that's it. That's it for my talk. I'm not, I'm not sh sure I understand the question. I mean, so I think maybe it could have been simpler. I was just kind of in a hurry, but um, like if, if model is just A and A is an integer, and then I add like B and B is a string, like I have to add B in the string here. Thanks. Yeah, I do it particularly in like um, like lists where you want to list every constructor, like all, like uh, if you have like if you have a message type that's a, oh yeah I forgot I can type like you know type A and that comes in like B and C and then you have um, all which is a list of A, right? All should have B and C in it, but you know if you add D then it won't. But if you have this reminder thing, there's something reminding you to do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've seen that. I've seen that too. So I guess this this is like a like a uh, a cheap hack to also remind you. But that, that's like an actual tool to, to do exactly this. Um, what else? Any other questions? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good question. It is something. Oh, actually, I have commented out here. I handle like something like that. Um, yeah, it is something I've run into. So, like, I think I've noticed in my experience, which I think is not too uncommon from other people's experience. Like a lot of events don't need any payload at all, right? Just knowing that save was clicked is enough information that you're you're happy that you learned um learned that. But then on the other hand, there's things like like user ID, like you mentioned, where it's like you you kind of want every single message to have that, but then you also don't really or every analytics message to have that. But you also don't want to like manually add that to each one. So I have here at the top of my tracking function, uh here's like one of those like I want to add it to every single analytics event which is like the page name, like what page are they at when they click this? Uh, so you can kind of add it at the very end in, and then you only have one spot in the code where you need to add that. Um, and then, so everything, at, like, I guess the way I'm thinking about it is like all analytics events, the information that you're tagging along is either specific to that one message or it's something you want every single message to have. It's either like particular or universal. So the universal stuff you can just kind of stick on at the end and then you only need to write once. Yeah, thanks for having me.